They say winning ain't everything. Well, we don't have them tight conversations over here, man. Had that conversation with the losers. We trying to win at everything we do. Even in the loss, we don't see defeat. We see a lesson learned. Straight up. Look, I came into this world in 1978. The doc looked me in my face and knew I was something great. 45, 42 Prescott, that's where I'm from. Grew up in the slums around dope dealers and bums. As humble as I was, I adapted to my habitat. In my own lane, no. Far from where they crashing that dumb bar graduate. The game out of mass it. Served in the Navy, look. Y'all don't know the half of it. Pops passing no one. Moms passed last year. I know they up in heaven smiling down, crying mad tears. Cause they saw I'm making it. No telling why I'm taking it. My city been cursed, but I feel that I'm breaking it. Coached at Wayne High in 15 in one state. Seen the fork in the road and went straight. I know what I'm worth, I'm OG King Kirk, Brooklyn Nets gaming crew legend, let's work. Hey, this is OG King Kirk, your host of the OG Two Cents podcast. I want to thank each and every one of you who continue to tune in each and every Sunday. We truly appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share it. Uh, links for all available streaming platforms will be in the description. Uh, make sure you continue to stand up against any form of social justice and racism. And this episode is brought to you by Zenny Blocks. Make sure to armor your eyes with Zenny Blocks Virtual Clear Blue Blockers. It's important to protect your eyes from the harmful blue light from your digital screens. So you'll have less eye strain and that makes for better sleep and performance. Check them out at zenny.com slash gaming or follow them at Zenny Gaming on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, this episode is episode 49, Hanging with Big Country, a.k.a. Big West. Uh, he's the general manager and head coach for Hornets Venom GT of the NBA 2K League. He's also one of the founder fathers of the NPBA, and he's the owner of NAPX. Um, without further ado, Big West, how you doing today? You know, I'm doing all right today, OG. Uh, but I appreciate you for having me today. Nah, without a doubt, man. You know, um... I'm rounding them out right now. You know, we're getting ready to get into our season. So I'm trying to get as uh, many coaches on before we get started, man. But, you know, Wes, I know we go way back, but a lot of people don't know your story and how you got to where you are. So uh, enlighten the people who listen. Um, So, I mean, so obviously, you know, just uh, coming up through, you know, kind of like I said, like the 2K community with, with you and LT, um, you know, like obviously everybody know that we kind of met like in the SBA days and the ABL days and stuff like that. And, you know, um, you know, LT decided, you know, start start his own league. And, you know, we just kind of jumped on board with that and, you know, kind of just seen, seen it through, built it to some, you know, I think that neither one of us imagined it, it would possibly turn into, um, <clears throat> you know, especially when, once they introduced the league and a lot of players that came funneling through the NPBA to start going into the league and start giving the NPBA like the recognition for like kind of, you know, kind of harnessing their careers. I think from that, from that point, you know, um, you know, for me, I think I was going through a lot of things, you know, at the house, you know, just, you know, just trying to fit, figure it out, you know, um, like, you know, what was, was this NBA 2K lead thing? You know, what it actually like to anybody else, like what it was, you know, is, is this something that I could even be involved in, you know, just for me being just a, a person from the community. And then, you know, um, yeah, I do youth, youth sports and stuff around, the, the community, so you know, uh, you know, trying to dev net, I wouldn't say where where to say like delegate my time out, and um, you know, as you know, as I kind of took a little, especially when I like took a little step back from everything, but I say about two uh, what two K sixteen, two K seventeen, somewhere up in there, it's kind of like just kind of took a little step back to kind of focus a little bit on you know stuff around the community, like stuff I care about outside video games. You know, I, I, that's when I kind of seen famous you know, kind of make his announcement, you know, that he, you know, he would join the Heat. And I was like, I thought that was pretty cool, refreshing, like to kind of see somebody from the community get in. And, and ultimately, it kind of gave a little hope, you know. So I think I want to say, like, you know, I, uh, season one, uh, the, the the Knicks, you know, had a little job hiring. And, you know, um, I, I think Dimer had posted it. So I just threw something out there to kind of see, like, you know, what what did it, what would have happened, you know, like, hey, you know, what happened? And, you know, I ended up getting a phone call from the Knicks. And, uh, you know, I went through, like, uh, two or three interviews with them. 
you know, ultimately, you know, I think at the time, especially the, uh, the first season, I think it's because it changed, but I, that kind of way they presented the job to me, it was like, you know, more like on a temporary basis. And, you know, it, was, it didn't feel like it was no security. You know, me at that time, I've probably been on my job that I was there for about, you know, about 14, about 13, 14 years at that time. And, you know, I, you know, I had a family and stuff like that house, you know, I'm just like, do is it really worth, you know, take going out on a limb, you know, for this, for this position, you know, like I said, I'm like the third round and into the interviews, you know, doing pretty, pretty well on the interviews, you know, making it to three. That guy was almost at the point where they was going to actually bring me out. But I, um, you know, I, so ultimately, you know, I decided not to, you know, not pursue it because it just felt temporary. It didn't feel like it was any security there. So, you know, I just, um, I mean, pretty much kind of bowed out of the job, you know, to a certain extent, however you call it, not necessarily declining, it, but it's more before I even got to be off, just kind of told them that, you know, at this time, I don't think it's the right fit for me. Um, you know, and that's like before in the office, anything came in, but I definitely was like in the running for that position. Um, you know, and I just sat back and watched it, and like then, I, you know, watching you and, you and LT kind of join the, um, the books, you know, I think I talked to, um, one night, I think his name maybe Ain't something like that, you know, a few times, and then y'all y'all joined in on him, and um, and I got seen, I'm like, well, wow, that's dope, you know, and I just kind of sat back there first, you just kind of, you know, just sat back and just, you know, just chilled out to see what the lead really was gonna be about and stuff like that. But I think in the midst of that time, me doing that, you know, I started to get the, I guess I ain't gonna say like the 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 bug or whatever, like the kind of kind of kind of come back within the community. By that time, you know, I, I probably was not really doing that, dealing with the community for about a few months now, you know, about five or six months at that time, you know, I kind of like I said, when I kind of took a little step back, I just took a little step back. And then, you know, uh, so now we probably into season one and, you know, I'm sitting there watching, I'm just thinking of looking at the community, you know, from Twitter, like we always do from social media. And I'm just like, man, you know, it'd be cool to kind of, you know, have something, you know, that kind of just content based, you know, just content driven and, but, and just don't do nothing that's, kind of like attached to any league, you know, like, you know, they, they had the NPBA, we had the NPBA going, you know, WR was going, and uh, this pretty much like the main two focus leagues that was kind of really still like going. WR was on, and to us seemed like it was like up and coming. It was coming. They've been around just as long, but, you know, I don't think they, they didn't quite have like the, you know, they had like, they, stayed, they still was kind of in a stage where they like, they loyal, um, our loyal teams that like, just like that league only. And like when we 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 had that stage in NPBA, but once we started, you know, getting growing, it kind of grew something bigger than than just the lawyer people. And ultimately, it kind of pushed some of like the the NPBA loyalists, you know, kind of out a little bit. But I think in that time, I was thinking, I was like, man, you know, I want to bring something to the community that you know that can kind of be like the you know I, that way I put it like the ESPN of the community, and you know, something that just can kind of just can you know cover all the leagues and it's not really attached to no league and it can kind of cover and have like the power rankings and like do content and ultimately just kind of um, be a network. So, you know, I, I just got the brainstorm and stuff, brainstorming names. And then that's kind of when I came up with the National Amateur Pro-Am Exposure, you know, uh, short-term NAPX. So I kind of introduced that to the community around 2018. I think, you know, ultimately like this throughout the post draft. So it, it got to catch the, self-taught wave, you know, almost when self-taught was running through the program and we kind of got to jump on that coattail and <laughs> and ride that wave right with him. And it kind of like took a took took off into his own little thing. And it became like, you know, everybody, I know one thing, everybody go crazy over lists and stuff. And and at that time it really wasn't nobody like really putting lists out like that, you know. Um so it's like okay, boom. So I guess you could say it kind of cultivated the quote unquote list culture at the time because you know we put lists out, people go crazy for it. And, and, you know, this kind of got his name off dead. And, you know, people, it became almost like a thing people love to hate. You know, they they, they don't get their name on the list. They go crazy and, you know, just hate on it. And right. it was interesting because, like, a lot of people ain't know, like, you know, like, who's behind it and, like, what's going on. And it, and actually, like, I think one time it was, it was about 10, 15 people, like, that pitched in to help out, kind of come create the lists and create the content that it had for it. Um, you know, and it, and it's still to this day, like, you know, the same few graphic designs to help out, you know, some went on move the eyeball, but they still help out um, with any graphics that's needed. You know, all I got to do is ask, you know, just, that's just uh, part of having a, a good relationship with, with those, uh, with the graphics people of the community. And then, you know, pretty much the same people that kind of 
helped start it out with the list and just creating content for it, you know, still hanging in there as well. So when we when we gear to do stuff in that fix, you know, I have, you know, a few people on deck to help. I want to say, I think that's kind of like the NAPX story. And then like, so and then in between all that, you know, while, while I was kind of doing NAPX, you know, now we kind of going into season two of the league. And, you know, now I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, maybe it's a possibility to join this league. So I want to say the Hawks, you know, when they when they announced that they were joining. Um, for me, like I always knew I wanted to be with Charlotte if Charlotte ever would have had a team. But, you know, you know, I just did my little due diligence. You know, unfortunately, they wasn't putting the team in the season two, but the Hawks came around. Um, you know, I think ultimately I had, you know, pretty, pretty good interviews with uh, Samir, who was running the, um, the Hawks organization, who was heading that. And, you know, ultimately when we was had going through our process and, you know, him telling me, like, you know, he really wanted somebody from Atlanta to, to, um, to kind of head, head everything. But he wanted to bring me on as like a like an advisor, and you know it was it was pretty cool, like some kind of advisor slash analyst, just some just to have me involved with the process. So you know I kind of took advantage of that, and you know I got to work with Wes, who's a great guy, and you know me and him kind of did did our thing throughout throughout the season, especially like early on before the season start, and then um, you know I kept a great relationship with him, and then like when the Hornets, you know, decided they was going to put a team in it, you know I think for for the most part, like I pretty much like on their radar to to pretty much bring in, and they decided to you know bring myself and Nacho in. So right. hopefully they give a good story of the, of the 2K background. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, how does it feel, you know, heading up a team from from where you from, man? You right down the road, like you at home. Like, how, how does mm -hmm. that feel? Man, you, you know what? I'm a, I, I, it it feels great, honestly. Um, like I, even like I say when they first announced the 2K League, I, you know I always mm -hmm. like man, you know if I had the opportunity to do it, I want to do it right here in Charlotte. Obviously, for obvious reasons, because I got my family here, everybody here, and you know I have kids they in school, and I, it ain't you know ain't got to be like I had to make those kind of tough decisions, like do I leave and you know stuff like that. So it's like it was like the perfect world for me. So but now it's like a reality, and I get that you know kind of. I'm not necessarily a long time fan of the Hornets. I'm not gonna tell you no story. Like I'm a fan of the Spurs, but um, you know, but it's still it's the hometown team, and you know, to kind of be like a guy of the community, and you know, having a team that's like you know community based type team. I mean, it just it, it everything just kind of it hit a lot of check marks for for them and myself, and you know, like that's why I like you know when stuff happens, like if we do stuff in the community, like it gets like like such a great response like you know via the community especially like you know because everybody kind of know me from the community right man now you just completed your rookie season as a general manager and head coach beat me by the way uh <laughs> you know i ain't i ain't i ain't knocked off an mpba uh member yet like i have yet to beat lt and, yeah. and didn't beat you uh this past season yeah but, I'm I'll be both for y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm look, I'm I, I'm looking to change that. But um, <laughs> talk, talk about you know the success uh, and and what it was like going through your first season. Man, so I I, I could tell you, you know, when I when I, you know getting into the league, being an expansion team, and you know that you know they tell us our draft position and stuff like that. I'm like, man, when I when everything said done. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna get. I, I knew the players who kind of had some value for trade value. I knew LT will probably want Mo back. You know, at, at, at the end day, I knew Type could have. I Type could have went back. Um, I want to say, you know, I knew. You know, Jeff was in love with um, um, what boy name? Uh, Streddy. Streddy. Yeah, he was in love with Streddy. So I'm like, I, so I knew the players that kind of had like a little trade value who can possibly get back to their team, and I could just, you know, kind of take their pick instead of having a player. At the end of the day, like, you know, one thing about the draft, you don't know what the draft class is going to be like, but it's like, you know, I'm like, I, I'd rather go out there in the draft and I kind of let these guys kind of get back to their teams, you know, somewhere where they'll be almost truly happy at for the most part. And when I got tight, you know, when, when they, you know, I think at first, you know, it was rumors that the Warriors are going to release Keenum or they're going to release type. It was one of the two. It never was, like, I think Beast Move was like never up in the air like far as coming, but I knew that whoever the Warriors kind of dropped, I was going to take one of those Warriors players. This is because, you know, from the culture they come from, you know, it was when they just came off a hot season. So I knew I was going to take one of those players. 
And um, you know, we're just kind of waiting on who they were gonna ask for release. So they when they decide to, you know, put type out there, I, I was gonna send him back to his team, but then you know, I was like, man, he's probably one of the best big men in the league. You know, I could kind of look to build a team around him. And that's kind of was the plan going into the draft. Like I like, you know, I got the got a center. You know, I was able to trade Mo back to LT, got his first round pick for him. Uh Strainer, you know, that ended up trading Strainer back to the to the Cavs, kind of picked up the first round pick. But in return, I had to give them the future first round pick. That's what, you know, they used that this year. But I was like, I ain't worried about that first round pick because you know why? Because I'm making playoffs and I'm trying to make that first round pick, you know, too much or nothing. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. <laughs> so the whole season, I'm like, man, listen, if, if, if we better make it to this playoffs because I ain't trying to get them no high first round pick. I'll tell you that. So I, I, I always kept that at the back of my mind and stuff. But, you know, um, it, it, I think it was pretty easy to build a team around tight, having the center. Uh, just, you know, kind of get some people to kind of offset his personality a little bit, kind of low ego guys. And um, and, and I, I was able to do that with Alex, Stevie, and, and Zay, and ultimately bring Blizz and Trap in too. So I think, you know, I knew I had a, a talented team for sure. It was just all about, you know, us putting it together because, you know, like we, we had four Rickets on the team. So, um, you know, be the first team, first team with four Ricks to make to the playoffs. Obviously, it was like a first in the league, you know. That probably won't never be done again like that. But who knows? Maybe it will. But uh, right now, we're going to hold that little, that little accomplishment to ourselves. But it was just, you know, just kind of stand on stand on them, you know, just make sure we stay the course. And, you know, um, we, I, I've seen, you know, with the pandemic, the pandemic actually helped us a little bit a lot because we able to, we was able to get that extra practice time in. You know, I think if we had to start the league, like when the league's supposed to start, you know, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily knew we would have had the early on success that we did. So the, I definitely say the pandemic kind of helped us a little bit with them pushing the uh, league back because now we was able to work out some more kinks and things like that. And we kind of got on that hot, hot little roll going five and two in the first seven weeks. And then, you know, we just had to this this mathematically just keep keep it up. And I know it was a, the game versus y'all at the end of the season. It was, um, it was, it was, it was, it wasn't as much as a big game for us as it was for y'all. I think if y'all won, Y'all automatically, it was good, you know, because whether T Wolves, y'all had the tiebreaker T Wolves and some other teams. So it was like for us, it, it it didn't really matter that much, but it but it was keeping us in a good position. So obviously, I definitely wanted to win that game, and you know, we was able to um, come out and win the game. I was a little confident going against y'all because you know we you know we kind of had seen y'all through through some practice scrims, and you know, like I like man, we we I know we can beat them if we play our game, you know. So when we was able to stay the course and and win, then you know. Ultimately, when we had to see y'all again, I was a little worried we had to see y'all again because, you know, we just really played y'all like a week, maybe a week and a half ago or two weeks at the most. And, I'm like, you know, it's, it's hard to beat a team twice. You know what I'm saying? Now we're in the playoffs where it matters the most. And, you know, we had a great battle. And I think we actually beat y'all off a, I think a last second shot from tight, really, you know, like just, yeah. a, just a last second shot. And then and to, to, to finish that game also, we won't have to go to a game three. So we definitely barely got out of that game two by the high eye skin. I definitely didn't want to go three games, y'all. I felt we went three games. I was just in any man's game at that point. And I'm like, so we're gonna beat them. We gotta beat them in the, in the with this second game. And, you know, we we got we got blessed. You know, the ball that like, kind of land type right in the perfect spot, and he was able to you know, kind of put it back in for the win. So, um, but I don't know. I think we had a great uh, great rookie season. Like I say, us having four rookies making it to the playoffs, and they can kind of have that on their resume as far as saying, you know, they, they didn't make base salary, you know, all the other stuff that the 2K uh, right. like talk about. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, now, you work with Nacho, who, you know, turned from went from player uh, to management. Uh, what's it like working with Nacho? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Man, Nacho, like, it's, 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 it's very fun working with Nacho. Nacho, like, he kind of like a ball of fun. And it, it, even even now, you know, I'm going to go talk jump to him like, you know, some kind of way you found your way into my interview. I always mess with him. And I feel like every time something turn around like Nacho Neko or some kind of way, and we just laugh and, and, and you know, have a good time by it. But Nacho is, um, to me, like, man, very, very fun person to be around. It's like you cannot not like the guy, you know. Um, I think God's just a good-hearted person. He always got, you know, everybody's best intentions at heart. And, you know, and, and it was just, you know, he kind of matched my personality to, to a certain extent. Cause, you know, I'm, I like to have fun, laugh, and, you know, just a good, kind-hearted person as well. So we we both on the same page when it comes to that. You know, I think we, we work together well. 
you know, it's you know, he he bring me stuff, I bring him stuff, and you know, we just I think we was a good team, so I think they couldn't have paired me with no better person. And you know, obviously, you know, he's like very knowledgeable when it comes down to a lot of different things, especially on the uh, business side of stuff and you know, the creative side of things. And you know, and I like to thank myself being super creative too, like pretty much. You know, he take all my ideas. He take credit for everything, and it, it's all right. You know, I'm used to it now. <laughs> <laughs> I like, it. I'm you. I'm used to it now. You know, you know. So he take all my ideas. You know, but you know, it, but it's, it's it's all good. But we got the same goal in mind, and and you know, and sometimes I I might just have the idea, but you know, he actually can he bring it to life a lot of times. So you know, I might have a thought. And then he turned the thought into to a plan, and then you know we just and we just go from there, you know. So it's been I think you know the Hornets they couldn't pair me with no better person. Like I say, just a good person overall, good dude. And you know I'm I'm happy to say that I I met him in my life, you know. Like it's just uh, overall just somebody that you want to have in your life. No, oh, that's what's up, man. I mean, you know what's the one thing about I remember back in our MPBA days, man. You you know it was two things that you used to always talk about. One, you know, you're cooking, and then two, you know, coaching youth football, like coaching yeah. your sons, coaching a lot of people in the community. Uh, just touch on those two uh, two subjects for a minute. Okay, so I, I guess the easiest thing to I, I touch on the on the youth part first, man. You know, um, when, when I got out of school, I, I you know I knew you know obviously going to school. It's cool, but it, it really at the time like it, it really wasn't for me. It's, it's not for everybody, you know. I, I, I and then I ended up being one of the guys who got out of high school and then landed a, a great job straight out of high school. So and then you know to me like I was working at General Tire, which is like a, a company that make ties. You know I'm I'm what 18 years old, making 23 dollars an hour. You know like I mean. I mean, I'm living life at this point. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. it don't sound like much, but back then it was like, man, I'm living. You know, I'm just out of high school, no college degree, no nothing. Like, get making eighteen dollars out. I mean, I moved out of my mom's house, got me an apartment. I'm living on the floor. You know what I'm saying? I'm chilling, but I got my own. You know, I work from them. You know, I build it up from there. My mom, she gave me her her, her furniture set when she upgraded. And I start building from there. But you know, and and at the time, you know, like I always been into sports, especially into football. So, you know, I started, like, I wanted to, like, make a difference. So, like, you know, hey, let me take, you know, my gifts and, and my passion into to the youth football. So I, when I started dealing in that and, you know, just started seeing that, you know, you make an effect on kids. And and, and I think it's relationships that, that last forever. Like, you know, I've been doing it now for about, I'm with, oh, Lord have mercy, over about 20-something years. And um, and just to have those they older now, so now I'm at the point where I'm starting to see like their kids. So I'm right. like, you know, <laughs> it's like whoa, I'm like whoa. But you know, especially then when I had my son, then I had my son. I, I, you know, you get a son, you are you in your mind, you like, hey boy, you you finna be out there. So when you get on, hey look, he one one years old, I'm already tackling him a little bit. Like yeah, you go get tough, huh? He running the ball, gives a little jig, moves on. Like okay, yeah, he got, got a little jilly on. Y'all see it. So when we, so when we track, we were four going five. Come on, pick them up. We gone. Cause you know, uh, right here they played. They start playing contact, you know, football at the age of five. Um, you know, we had help. No, you know, I, I didn't. I think one thing I did with him, like I, I didn't really like, kind of like pressure him into. I just always kept him in it. You know, um, you know, if he gonna be good, he gonna be good. But I, I just want to let him quit or whatever. So you know, he he went through his his shares of lumps, like especially like obviously at five and then six. But then he started really pick up on it. Like when he was at the age of seven. And you start to see progression him getting better and better every year. Um, and I'm like, okay, you know, he, he might be all right in the game. But then, you know, and I still got all the other, you know, kids that, I, that I've been coaching and this being involved because, you know, around here, like we try to mentor through sports. Um, and, you know, so, you know, spend a lot of days, you know, picking kids up practice, picking kids up game. Going, you know, um, being involved, we have programs where we still do run programs where, you know, we help the kids with their schoolwork, like tutoring. Like we kind of use the uh, parents of the organization. You know, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of smart people around. So, you know, they they chipping their time to help tutor the kids, you know, the ones who kind of need need the extra help. So uh, kudos to the parents who help out with that. And just like I said, it's just been a program. We've been doing it now for a while, like with this, with this, with this program for about, about Oh wow, I'm losing the losing count of the years, but definitely been a great thing. I think the kids definitely truly benefit from it. And um, like I said, it's, it's always great to have those relationships. 
you know, when they get older, they say, what's going on, coach? How you doing? You know, this is my son right here. I'm going to get him out there with y'all soon he get old enough and, and things like that. And, and believe me, when they get old enough, they they, they know where to bring them to. They bring them. So that's just something I always cherish. Um, I probably cherish for the rest of my life. And uh, just something like my life's work. And um, and I say, I, I have another guy that, you know, who I kind of watched and, you know, kind of watched his effect on the kids. And and it really rubbed off on me to kind of, you know, stay in that, to go in that lane and be down that path, like the way he going. Um, and I can say, now I have kids of my own and they doing their thing coming up through sports. And now we'll get to the cooking side of things. Like I always known myself to be Chef, Chef Lair is what I call myself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, man, you know, cooking always been a passion of mine. Like I love, you know, some people like, you know, you love to write music, love to do this, man. And cooking was my 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 way of expressing myself. Like, you know, um, just like throwing different flavors together. And you know, first, I mean, don't get me wrong, I done made some stuff. It, it's just like good God almighty, but you know, I feel you gotta go through that to learn. So, you know, then like I said, I really start cooking when I start like say experimenting with like a lot of different flavor profiles and you know, just having fun cooking and, and it just kind of turned into something like I like I know when I'm sitting when everything's said and done for me, I want to be the uh, old guy with with the food truck or a food trailer just knocking out bomb food. You know, I, I know it'll be a success. I'd like to say I do I, I already do like small stuff on the side for people like you know Super Bowl coming up uh Sunday, big wing orders, you know, people love my wings for sure. And uh, I I'm I got so many wing orders. I'm 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 nervous just thinking about it, but I get it knocked out. Um, you know, like I said, when I get older, I'm just gonna be that guy. You're gonna see the guy with the truck and just people I'm like, man, well, that boy food good. And I'm just, that's 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 just me when I get older. That's what I want to do. Good man. You know, right now we transitioning. We've been in the off season for a minute. Now we're getting revved up uh for season four. Uh just talk about uh some of the things that you're looking forward to and then you know, what kind of advice can, can you send to the season four prospects? Well, um, season four, you know, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to, you know, get kind of, kind of build off what, what I had last year, you know, I, I got different players, but I think I did a good job of bringing players, you know, I was a, a LT players over <laughs> from, um, from Mavs game. But I, I mean, it was my, you know, I wanted to bring guys that was from a winning culture. And, you know, like they, those two guys, they've been winning since they've been in the league. So, you know, they already have their own expectations and, you know, and we just kind of want to build about that. Like we've been, I've been to the playoffs last year. I want to make it back to the playoffs again this year. Hopefully make a little deeper run, if not win the whole thing, you know, and I, I feel like I, I'm, I know I'm going to get me a championship before I, before I was for it said and done, before I hang it up. I mean, it's, it's already written. I just don't know what year it's going to be in. <laughs> Hope rather sooner than later. But, um, you know, so I'm just looking forward to getting my, getting my new team here out here in Charlotte, you know, showing them a good time. And then, you know, and just really getting to work on, like, trying to see what our identity going to be and get ready to start these uh, season battles with everybody. And I'm looking, truly looking forward to that. Um, and I say for the prospects coming in, uh, and like, especially since we, like, you know, it's a good thing. We could talk about we're in interview time, interview phase. You know, I, I think, you know, you know, dress for success. That's that's the the first thing that I, that comes to my mind, because like I, I see some people kind of taking, you know, be yourself. Literally, they, they see on like on when people tweet that on TV, you know, just be it. I mean, I'm sorry, on Twitter, just be yourself. Like, yeah, it's, it's it's yeah, you be yourself, but like that don't mean come to the interview in, in a white tee and a do rag on, you know, and stuff like that. Like, you know, like, be professional. You don't got to come with a three piece suit on, but definitely like. You know, you know, dress just dress for success a little bit. You can put on your little nice little simple little polo or collared shirt and and just look presentable. Um, I think like people look at that how you present yourself. I say so. That's that's the thing number number one. And then thing number two, you know, just kind of don't don't be afraid to ask ask questions. You know, I don't think I, they always always a saying they say you know ain't no bad question. And I think that's true. You know, like don't don't be afraid to ask questions because a lot of times a lot of people I interview. I ask them, hey, you got any questions? They gonna, they say no. And it's like, and I, and I, and I start pressuring them a little bit. So it just ain't nothing you don't want to know about. You don't want to know about nothing. You know, you say, and then, then they'll come out with something. So, okay, so you, you have a you have a question. And it's like, so don't be afraid to ask questions. And, and, and on top of that, have questions to ask, you know, like, and I, I say, don't be afraid to ask questions, but make sure you come prepared with questions. It's always something you want to know about. 
So just be, make sure you got questions. If you if you don't know what's a good question, ask y'all. Most of y'all got a lot of friends that's in the league, and um, and so obviously you know you hear what they talk about. So kind of get with them, and you know kind of just pick their brain a little bit. And as you hear the things that they, you know, a lot of them going to complain about stuff that they don't like, some stuff they do like, take take what you hear from them and then, you know, kind of formulate you some questions so you can kind of find out what is that team culture like when, you know, for the teams that interest in you. Because at the end of the day, it's like, you know, y'all y'all interviewing for us, but we interviewing for y'all as well, you know, um, and you should approach it like that. No, you're right. That's some uh, good advice, man. Uh, last thing before we get to the rapid fire round, um, you know, you had a, a, a tribute uh, from Hornets Venom GT, and, and it was also shared on a Hornets, uh, Charlotte Hornets website. Uh, how did that make you feel? So, like I said, it, I, it made me feel very good. Um, like I said, I knew they was going to do it for them, and they reached out to me and kind of explained to me what they wanted to do. It was just an honor, you know, everybody that's in the organization, you know, they came to me. Like, hey, we want, want to really feature you on the piece. But like I said, it's kind of a testament to, you know, I, me being probably just a, home, a, home, a hometown, you know, home kid area too. So, um, you know, they they knew kind of like the things I do, I do in the community. And you know, like I said, they wanted to like kind of just highlight, give me a little, I guess you could say kind of give you your flowers a little bit while, you, while you're here. And I was honored, you know, and then they posted. I wasn't really expecting them to post on the Hornets page. Um, I, I figured it maybe would come out on the Venom, of course. But, you know, they post on the Hornets page, and then the NBA kind of picked it up, and they and they reposted it. And, uh, you know, it was just like, I'm like, whoa, the NBA reposted it. I'm like, right. that's big time right there. I, I wasn't expecting the NBA to kind of repost it, but the NBA reposted it, and then obviously the 2K League reposted it. So it kind of got, like, a lot of little traction. And, you know, and then what, what's even better for me is people, like, you know, actually coming into my DMs and, you know, kind of just talking about it, like, you know, just the the, the little bit that, I, that was given out in the it, – it, picked up and inspired some people to want to get involved a little bit in the community. And that's what I think I was most shocked about. I had a few messages on Instagram and um, just asking like, how can they get involved into the community? That's kind of like the lane that they want to go down in, especially when they're dealing with youth sports and, and stuff like that. So just kind of giving people information on how they can kind of get active and get involved. And I'd say that, that honestly shocked me the most, you know, alone on Instagram and I got like three or four messages this from people I never even met before. And but they hold things like, you know, I read the story, I loved it, you know, and it kind of how it inspired them a little bit. And you know, a few people like say, you know, they want to go down that path of, you know, kind of become getting more into the community and stuff like that. Like I said, I had one guy, you know, like, you know, he wanna be get involved to sports and he just wanna know where to start. So I'm actually gonna point him in the right direction, kind of get him, get him going on his journey. So that's like I said at the end day, that was the most awesome thing about it to me wasn't expecting, you know, kind of get those, those private messages and things. Like I said, I knew it was a story and it was an honor, but like I said, it kind of like took on a little life of its own. But I think the purpose was for to reach those few people that did reach out to me and, um, you know, to kind of get the information that they need and, and kind of tell me like it kind of inspired them. So like I always say, man, if we could just touch one person, you know, I've I done my job. Uh, that's what's up, Wes, man. Uh, right now, this is a uh... A rapid fire round og wants to know uh you know just questions uh, that hope answer open and honestly uh, uh -oh. <laughs> getting started man uh biggest influence man the biggest the biggest influence right right now in my life is uh i, I be honest i'm gonna I'm I'm say rick ross <laughs> you know what i'm saying because like <laughs> hey, well, i'm gonna tell you a little bit about that because like just kind of watching his health journey right that's, you know, you know, I don't know if you pay attention to him, but like just watch his transition on his health journey. That kind of it like definitely inspired me to like, you know, work on my health and stuff and, and down that lane. And just his whole hustler ambition and hustler spirit, which I always felt like I had a hustler and big hustler spirit. So that's why I kind of relate a little bit more to him. So right now, definitely he like my my biggest influence right now in my life. And I, I know it's crazy, but it's him. Nah, man, what what motivates you? You said what motivate me? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, man, man, just man, just getting the grind. The, the, the love of the grind. My kids motivate me. You know, just trying to provide a life for them that I that I never had. You know, them not one for nothing. It's good and bad because like my kids spoil. They spoil. They they spoil to the max. And you know, and now they're at the point now. You know, my son here tell me in a minute like uh, you spoil me, so deal with it. 
I mean, like he tell me that straight out, you know. <laughs> so you know, but I did spoil him, man. You know, just the just just them, man. Just I wanted them to have something that I never had, and just you know try to change, um, you know, make life better for them. So I do all the hard work so they don't have to, and they and they can focus on other things in life that I probably wasn't able to focus on. So definitely, I say my kids motivate me the most, and you know, like I said, and I want to be them to look at me and say, hey, you know, my dad, dad done it, I can do it. You know, and that's and at the end of the day, that's my biggest motivation. And I'm trying to create generational wealth, you know, say for, for my grandkids, kids, kids. So that's my motivation. Got you, got you. Favorite video game of all time. Madden. Now just it's, it's, it's just gonna be Madden. All all versions of Madden. I, I I was a Madden was got me love it with competitive game. I always had a competitive spirit, but it's just like playing Madden and just kind of being the dude and round away. Like, yo, he's good. And then people come to get me to, you know, come play for bets that they don't place and stuff like this. So I just say Madden is like, the, is my favorite, you know, like video game of all time. Just any, all, any year of Madden. I, that's why I started off on. And, you know, I just got good and got my true competitive spirit for just going around whooping up on people at Madden. <laughs> favorite sports teams? Oh, uh, uh, San Antonio Spurs, San Francisco 49ers, San Francisco Giants. Them like probably the, the three major sports I follow, like football, basketball, and baseball. Okay. Oh, uh, wait, so wait, 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 wait. I'm getting to college. Getting to college here. No, no. Florida Gators for the football and the uh, Tar Heels for the basketball. Gotcha. Uh, favorite athlete? Deion Sanders. Okay. Favorite actor and actress? Ooh, you know, I, I, I was looking at that question. That that, that hurt me to my heart. I'm trying to think. I, 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 my, my, one of my favorite actors is Eddie Murphy, for sure. Eddie Murphy, like, he's just a super talented guy. Um, make you laugh. You know, I ain't going to say make you cry, but he definitely had you laughing. So <laughs> Eddie, Mur Eddie Murphy is definitely my, my favorite. I can watch all his movies, like, back to back to back all day long, and they can just play, and I still laugh at the same parts. So I want to come out of Eddie Murphy. Um, my, my favorite actress, whew. I, I, I'll say Holly Berry. It's just a classic, you know. Just Holly Berry, just it's just a classic, you know. She's a classy one. So, Holly right. Berry. would that would that be the same? That would that would be the same for your celebrity crush? No, that would not be the same for my celebrity crush. <laughs> uh, my celebrity crush will be uh, Lala. Okay. Lala, yes. Got you. Favorite movie of all time? I got so many. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I mean, I got, I got, I got some, oh man. Right, give me, a, give me your top like, five then. Give me your top five. Huh? Give me your top five. My top five movies, like I say, Superbad, um, House Party, uh, Class Act, uh, shoot, yeah, House Party, Class Act, uh, Life, and, uh, man, and pretty much all the Fridays. So, I mean, I got a lot, a lot of different movies, but, you know, this is some of the ones that I think is timeless to me. Got you, got you. Uh, favorite gaming console? Xbox. <laughs> got you. What would you be doing if you wasn't doing what you're doing right now? I'm still working, still working my job. Um, as as a still working my job at what for Ross Distribution Center as a um as a trainer. Um, you know, it's part of like being the corporate part of Ross. Uh, it's pretty good. Like you know, I'm a I'm a people person, so being being a corporate trainer it allows me to interact with with Ross, hundreds of people, <laughs> you know, so like, I think it ought to be prepared me to like, you know, to deal with like a lot of different personalities. So I'll probably be still doing that, just hanging out, chilling there and, you know, just, just help, helping that company keep growing. Um, at this moment, tell everyone how they can follow you and what you do. Say it again. I said, tell everyone how you can follow, how they can follow you and what you do on social media. Okay, so you can follow me on Twitter uh, right now. It's at Big West 2K, B I G G W S T 2K. Uh, I want to say on Instagram, uh, Big West, B I G G W S T underscore. And then and um, on Facebook, just Lawrence West. Okay, man. West, man, you know, it's always a pleasure, bro. I mean, you know, the, you one of the, the great guys, man. I, I ain't never, you know, we done, done, we done went through a lot, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. And getting to where we at right now, man. There's so many stories uh, that uh, one day we're gonna probably write about, and, and so people can read and talk about it. But you know, I ain't never seen you upset, man. I ain't never seen you, you know, <laughs> mad. I ain't never seen you complain about nothing. Like you just always been just good energy, somebody that 
I can always talk to, man. I know, you know, we still got a project on the, on the back burner that's going to eventually come mm -hmm. to life. Uh, oh, I yeah. I, I can't wait to get that. I, we ain't going to say too much about it, but <laughs> we, we know it's something, something that's going to be uh, definitely worth a watch. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm thankful for you, Wes, man. I appreciate you coming on the show, brother. Man, you know, I feel the same way about you, man. Like, yeah, uh, definitely it's a great, a great dude, man. Like, uh, I feel the same way about you. Like I do not. So it's just, it's just good to have good people in your life. And, and I try to be that same person that people around for people as well. Just a positive person. Um, I, I really don't have a lot of room for a lot of negativity in my life. And, you know, and I don't bring ne negativity in nobody else's life. I, I, I'm too busy trying to help want to see people succeed and whatever it is they want to do. So, um, and I always gonna support people and, you know, that's just me. And I felt like, you know, my life just been, been, been great because, because of my outlook on life. And, you know, just always, you know, just one willing to do things for people. And, you know, I think, you know, the Lord above, you know, he, he I haven't seen, you know, I, I've been blessed, you know, it, it might not always, everything ain't always with money, but, you know, it's like, whether you're blessed with your health or these, these here where you can get around, you ain't hurt, you ain't in pain. And so it's, it, I just been blessed, you know, been been fortunate to, you know, stay afloat about throughout all these recessions and everything's going on, you know. So I'm just, you know, at the end of the day, I'm thankful. But like, like I said, I just believe in good karma and I'm going to do my best. I would do right by people. Good, man. Well, that's well. Like I said, thanks for coming on, man. And I'll definitely be in touch with you, bro. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you having me. Thanks so much for even considering me to have you on the show. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, for for everyone uh, who listened to this episode or watched it on YouTube, remember you can catch the OG Two Cents podcast on all major streaming platforms. Uh, also, you can watch it on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe as well. Uh, you can follow me, uh, OG King Kurt, at www.ogkingkurt.com. That's everything OG King Kurt and the OG Two Cents podcast. Uh, make sure you follow. Uh, me on social media at OG King Kurt. That's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also follow the OG Two Cents podcast on social media. Uh, that's the OG Two Cents podcast. That's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. Um, shout out to my team, Strider Visuals, Box Graphics, and Cy Evermore uh, for continuing to make this show what it is today. Um, also, you can check me out on Esports Extra every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's what host Larry Ridley, uh, the crew, Kelly Wells Brinkley, Antonio Williams, Devin Rowell, and producer extraordinaire Kevin Mamouzet. Uh, we talk esports and traditional sports, and it's at twitch.tv slash compete forever or compete forever with Facebook gaming and YouTube. Um, make sure that you catch next week's episode. And remember, if it makes sense, it's an OG two cents. OG out. Put this work in, fellas. And much, much, much love to the entire 2K community for always showing me love. Without y'all, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah.